bring you this morning is God remembers. In a moment, we're going to read Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 17. I would like to start by sharing a testimony of a prayer being answered. During my first years of marriage, Raul and I had a strong desire to have a child and nothing was happening. One day in early March 2004, we came here to this church and we prayed at that altar. Raul was very specific and he prayed for a baby girl. <laughs> Mary is answered to prayer. God heard and answered that prayer, and Mary is a blessing from God to her father and myself in many ways, and she's a blessing to many people as well. Amen. Have you ever prayed and God answered? Praise the Lord. It's amazing. But what happens when we pray and God does not seem to hear that prayer. There are prayers that are difficult or seem difficult. When we pray to the Lord for a loved one or someone that we know and we care about, and we pray that God saves this person and this person seems to be so lost in sin and in addiction, and at times it seems like this person may not come to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. So many times we pray for the healing of someone. Sometimes there are incurable diseases and the doctors don't seem to have a good report, although we pray. Sometimes we pray for a problem, but what happens? It seems like it, the, the, those problems get worse or bigger. And when that happens, sometimes we feel that God is not hearing us. Or sometimes we even lose hope that God hears those prayers. This morning, I want to remind you, my brother, my sister, my friend, God hears our prayers. God remembers our prayers. And God answers our prayers when we least expect it and in ways that we cannot even imagine. I would like us to go to the Bible and consider the beautiful example of two people that were righteous before the Lord. I would like us to read the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. So we're going to Luke chapter 1. We're going to read verses 5 to 17. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of the Lord, hallelujah, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly, praise the Lord. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by law, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled 
and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. My brothers, my sisters, would you like God to hear and answer your prayers? There are some characteristics that we see in Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, the Bible says, were righteous before God. They were blameless. Does that mean that they were sinless? Not at all. But there is an important ingredient. They trusted God to forgive their sins when they repented. Also, they trusted God to help them obey the Lord's commands. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they talked about God's love. <coughs> but the most important thing is that they obeyed these laws that as they were teaching them. That's why they are called righteous before the Lord when they are considered blameless. I would like to talk a little bit about Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a relative of Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we read, she had no children, like Sarah and a few other women in the Bible. What happened to Sarah? She had a son when she was 90 years of age. Praise God. What happened to Rachel, Jacob's wife? After so many years of suffering, seeing her sister have so many children, God heard her prayer and she had two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. What happened to Hannah, the wife of Elkanah? Her husband's second wife had so many children. And finally, God heard Hannah's prayer. And she had a child, Samuel, the prophet. Elizabeth means God's promise. And Elizabeth knew the promises of the Lord for his people in Israel and for her own personal life. Elizabeth knew that God was with her and that God was with her people although they were slaves to the Roman Empire and they were under the rule of a foreign man who called himself the king of the Jews. A characteristic about Elizabeth is that she loved the Lord. And she was married to a man who also loved the Lord with all his heart, Zechariah. I would like to talk to you a little bit about Zechariah. He was a man who feared the Lord with reverence. And as a priest, he was given the responsibility to also teach the people of Israel the life-giving lessons of the scripture. We thank God for our Sunday school teachers that are teaching and sharing these life-giving lessons. Zechariah means the Lord remembers, and that's why the title of my message. And how appropriate this 
blame for the circumstances that they were living. As I said, Zechariah was a priest, a man in charge of leading the people of Israel in the knowledge of God, a man that was in charge of leading the nation of Israel in the worship of the true God. He was also leading the people to continually trust in the Lord and to not lose hope, no matter what their circumstances might be. For us here at Parkview, does any of these sound familiar? Yes, our pastor, the leadership in this congregation, and I can say this congregation do the same thing, a blessing of helping us know more about God, worshiping the Lord together, and encouraging each other in our faith in the Lord. As the associate pastor here at Parkview Church of the Nazarene in Fairview Heights, I also share the responsibility to lead the people to God, to encourage you, to pray for you, to bless you. Going back to this story, Israel, as I said a moment ago, was under the rule of an ungodly king, under the dominion of a pagan empire that considered them slaves. Israel, without a rightful king, without hope. And like Jesus said it at one point in the book of John, Israel was like sheep without a shepherd. My brothers, my sisters, we can truly acknowledge that there are people in our families, in our communities, that are under the rule of spiritual powers that are holding them slaves to sin, to addiction, to wickedness. It is our responsibility, not only pastors or the prayer warriors or the leaders in the church, it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to pray for their deliverance and for their salvation. I appreciate the faithfulness of those that pray for people that need God. What else do we see in Zechariah? Zechariah was faithful in fulfilling his duties as a priest, no matter what. And he was given the duty to present the incense in the altar of the Lord. Now, offering the incense was a very special event that may happen only once in a lifetime in the life of a priest. Zechariah was chosen out of about 18,000 other priests. And this is just an approximate number, not an exact number, of course. It was a unique opportunity. It was special. And the Bible says this was the time of the prayer when they presented the incense. We don't know if it was the morning or the evening prayer. And in presenting the incense, they would do it with prayer and supplication for the nation of Israel. And Zechariah prayed for his nation. And in the meantime, the Bible says outside, the worshiper were also praying. This is so beautiful. This is awesome. A man of God praying before the Lord for his nation and the nation praying to the Lord as well in one same spirit, praying. And it is a great privilege to pray for the people of God. It's a solemn and a very spiritual moment. And what we see also in this passage of the scripture is that God is present. My brothers, my sisters, every time that we pray, every time we are together in the name of Jesus, God is with us. 
That's why we have the assurance that God hears our prayers. Praise the Lord. To whom do we pray? A sovereign God. A loving God. A mighty God who hears our prayers. He remembers our prayers. And he answers our prayers. Elizabeth and Zechariah were good people making a good petition, praying to a good God, and they got a good answer to their petition. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why it's awesome to have the opportunity to pray to God in the name of Jesus. The last person we find here in this event is an angel, Gabriel. Gabriel means God is my strength. And yes, many times when we pray, we do need the strength from the Lord to go on and not give up. This angel is the same angel that visited Mary six months later to announce the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Gabriel's first words, do not be afraid. And he said the same thing to Mary, because it's, of course, frightening to be in the presence of an angel of the Lord. And here is also the second reason for my message. The angel tells Zechariah that God remembered Zechariah's and Elizabeth's prayer. As I said a moment ago, Zechariah means God remembers. My brother, God remembers your prayers. My sister, God remembers your prayers. God hears our prayers when we pray them here inside the temple or when we pray them outside in our home. God hears the prayers that we pray in silence. The prayers we pray with tears in our eyes. The prayers that we speak aloud. God hears them. God hears our prayers for salvation, for healing, for a child, for blessing, or any other petition as the Lord lays them in our hearts. God hears them, remembers them, and answers them. My brothers, my sisters, would you like God to hear, remember, and answer your prayers? 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and I'm paraphrasing. We, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the confidence that whatever we ask God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be given to us. But we have to be careful how to apply this scripture because there is a caveat there is a condition as long as it is according to the will of God Zechariah and Elizabeth their prayers seem to go with no answer for many years Zechariah and Elizabeth did not stop praying they did not stop believing the impossible Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were doing the will of God. They were in the place where God wanted them to be. Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were obeying the Lord. They were serving the people of Israel and they were seeking to do God's will persistently. And that's not an easy thing. Sometimes doing the will of God is inconvenient, <coughs> is dangerous. We have to go out of our comfort zone, but Zechariah and Elizabeth were seeking to do the will of God. My brothers, my sisters, where are you in your walk with the Lord? Are you doing the will of God? Do you know the will of God for your life? If you don't know the will of God for your life, pray. Read the Bible. Come to church. There have been so many Sundays that
that through the preaching of the word and the teachings of the Sunday school lessons, God showed me his will. And at times it wasn't easy. But God gives us the strength to do his will. The last point I bring to you is a question. What happens when God answers our prayers? I have a few points to share. The first point is the most important. Salvation, the result of our prayers is salvation. Zechariah and Elizabeth's son was named John. And John means God saves. And look what John did. John prepared the way for the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. John brought many of the people of Israel back to the Lord, their God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When God remembers our prayers, as it says in verse, verse 14, there is great joy and gladness. And verse 14 also says, others rejoiced with Zechariah and Elizabeth. Other people rejoices with you when God hears your prayer and answers them. The answer to our prayers bring glory to our Lord, our God. The answer to our prayers help us feel closer to the Lord. When our prayers are heard and answered, we feel loved by God Almighty. When other people see that God heard our prayer and that he answered, their hearts also turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. When we experience the blessing of having our prayer answered, we become witnesses of the power of God. We become witnesses of the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, to continue to pray with confidence that God hears your prayers. He remembers your prayers. God answers your prayers. We are going to do what Zechariah did that day. We are going to present incense before the Lord. And we are going to pray together as a church. We are going to pray for our nation. And we are going to pray for one another. As I light the incense, I would like to read Psalm 141 verses 1 and 2 says, I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be said before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. My brothers, my sister, what is your petition that you have before the Lord? You may have been praying for some time for something, something specific. What is your request that you have been presenting to the Lord? What is that prayer that you would like to present to the Lord today as we are presenting this incense? Here, in this temple, with our brothers, and sisters, I would like to invite you, to challenge you to have faith, to come to the altars and pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we come to your presence with the confidence and the assurance that you are here with us, with your people. Lord, we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We confess him as our Lord, our Savior. And as we are gathered here together, we had a Sunday school lesson that speaks about forgiveness. Lord, please forgive us.
Forgive us, Lord, individually as a church. And Heavenly Father, as we are speaking about forgiveness, we also declare, confess our forgiveness of other people's offenses against us or this church. We forgive the past. We forgive everything that happened to this point, Lord, in our personal lives and in the life of our congregation. Heavenly Father, as we are here in your presence, we want to state once again our love for you, our God. It is amazing that we are approaching the mighty God who created the universe and at the same time, Lord, it's amazing to think that we're approaching a God who loves, loves us so much that he gave his only son for the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, Lord, forgive us, Father. And accept, Lord, these prayers that we are bringing to you this morning. Father, as we are praying to you for this nation, the United States of America, I want to start by telling you, Lord, thank you for bringing me here. Thank you, Lord, that I am here in the United States and for every one of my brothers and sisters. Thank you for the nation of the United States of America. Father, thank you. Because in this nation, there is safety. There is plenty of food. There are plenty of hospitals and doctors when we need medical attention, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that our children can go to school and receive education, regardless if they are a boy or a girl. Thank you, Lord, for the laws in this country that protect us. We thank you, Lord, for the police officers. We thank you, Lord, for the military that are here to defend us, Lord. Father, we pray for this nation that enjoys such privileges, Lord. And we pray, God, as we see that as a nation we're turning our backs to you, Father, we pray that you help the United States of America return to you. United States was known as a Christian nation all over the planet. Lord, Forgive the trespasses of this nation, Lord. Help us go back to the truth, and the greatest truth is that God loves us, and he is willing to save us, to help us, to deliver us, Lord, from our greatest enemies, which are Satan, sin, and death. Help us return to you, Lord. Father, we pray for the salvation of our families and our loved ones, that they may believe in Jesus Christ for their, for their salvation. Father, we pray for their healing in every area of their lives, even financially, Lord, even in the areas where they need it most, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for the Christian people in this nation, that you continue to help us, Lord, to proclaim Jesus Christ, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. We pray, Lord, for the Christian people in this country that you fill us up with the Holy Spirit, Lord. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to, to be witnesses in this nation, Lord. Father, we also pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the nation of Israel at this time that they are under attack, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your will be done. We pray for the salvation of the Jewish people. 
We pray for the salvation of the Muslim people in this world. We pray for the salvation of people that don't even know the name of Jesus. That they have the opportunity to hear his name and believe in Jesus and be saved. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love for the unsaved. We pray for the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with the love of God in such a way, Lord, that there is no room in our hearts for regrets or for any negative feeling, least of all hatred towards anybody anybody, Lord, even when we consider them enemies. Help us love them with the love of Jesus. Help us love one another like Jesus loved us sacrificially, completely. Heavenly Father, show us the urgency to all of us, Lord, to be ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That when we pray, we can say with desire and with passion, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, bless our congregation. Bless your people. Hear their prayers, Lord. Remember their prayers and answer them favorably, Lord. Bless your people today as we prepare to go home. Knowing, God, that the prayers that are being presented, Lord, by these that people that have come to the altars and the ones that are still sitting and praying to you, Lord, Heavenly Father, bless them by responding to their prayers. That we are praying today in the name of Jesus. We will hear praise reports of what you are doing, how you are responding to these prayers. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you are here. Your spirit is here. Thank you, Lord, that as this incense is elevating, Lord, and we are elevating our prayers, you are receiving it, Lord as this sweet aroma of the incense. Thank you, God, for the assurance that you hear our prayers. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>